Gina DeLuca here. Okay, so I had some leftover paint from uh, a couple of other paintings. I had some Mars Black and Titanium White uh, by Liquitex Basics, and I've mixed those together as my base coat slash background. This is gonna be a straight four. Uh, surprise. I have here, these are all cell makers. So the Liquitex is my background color. It's my base coat color. The background color is what goes in the cup first. That is what makes all of these cells, or these paints create cells. So in this cup here, I have the Deco Art Americana Decor Satin Enamels in Pure White mixed with that Liquitex Titanium White, uh, about 50-50 between those two paints. And... This color is the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in uh, Antique Bronze. And this color uh, I mixed and then rejected <laughs> from another color palette. It was, it was too much. It was too much for uh, what I was going for uh, and what this is. It's a mixture of vermilion, Quinacridone Magenta, uh, actually this is Artist Law Vermilion, Liquitex Basics, Quinacridone Magenta, and the Satin Enamel White. So adding the Satin Enamel White to that will, should, hopefully, uh, create cells. And again, that's a 50-50 mixture. So 50% of the satin enamels to 50% whatever other paint you're gonna put in there. And this last color is the uh, Americana Decor Metallics in Soft Gold. So I had the white and the is it, salmon, is it kind of salmon-ish? somewhat salmon-y color. And I had the black and white background colors. So I wanted to do a gray with this color because I find when, when you have a color that is just, um, if it feels too bright to you, if it feels a little too, uh, a little too much. <laughs> Sometimes putting it next to a strong neutral will actually neutralize that color. And so I feel like, you know, if you have just this kind of pinkish orange color by itself, it looks pretty pink, pretty orange. But next to a gray, it, they kind of tone each other down. You'll see. You'll see once it's all on there. It happens all the time. When when you look at the initial palette, you're like, oh, I don't know. But then once it all comes together, it's like, hey, that actually looks cool. So that's what we're working with today as far as the colors. So these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water, 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is. This is about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it is disappearing pretty quickly. And it makes a nice thin stream off of my stick, a very steady stream. This is very important. If your stream coming off of your stick is not steady like this, if it gets wider and then thinner and wider than thinner, your paints are not properly mixed. You have variations in your consistency within your cup, and that can end up causing you a lot of nightmares on your canvas. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube. Uh, that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brands, consistency, uh, the technique, of course, uh, everything that I can't fit on one of these cards. 
This here is the picture of the painting in that video. Here is the box that uh, gives you a little tip for that technique. And at the bottom, we have the color palette that was used in that particular painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the uh, basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors, mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. The first thing I'm going to do is put some of my background color in my cup. I'm doing about three ounces. I need enough of this for all of those other paints to react with. All right, now I'm going to lay down my base coat and I am going to try to save a little bit of this background color in this cup to go on top of my pouring cup. Sometimes it's helpful to just have a little bit reserved as those paints pop to the top of the pouring cup. Uh, it can be good to have some of that left over so that all of the cell makers have something to react with. So you will see that I have covered my edges, uh, not great coverage because these paints were already mixed with Floetrol as mentioned. Um, I was mixing leftover paints together and so it was already mixed with Floetrol, um, but that should be an indicator of why I'm using it. So on the sides, especially the way that I mix for a straight pour, the paint uh, mixed with Floetrol may not necessarily stick all that well to your sides. So you want to make sure that you have that covered so that you don't have to fix it later because that's a pain in the booty. Just do it now and be done with it. It only takes two minutes. It can save you an hour or more, especially if you have to custom blend colors. And I always lay down a base coat because I want my paint, my pour to puddle, to have something to float around up on. That helps me to keep my composition. It helps it to stretch more evenly and something has to stick to the canvas first. And if it's not your base coat, it's going to be your poured paints. And then you might wind up having to lose some very cool things on the edges because the paint that is in the center is going to roll over those edges because again, something has to stick to the canvas first. All right, my base coat is down. Let's put some paint in a cup. So the first color I'm going to put in is the white. This should give me some beautiful clouds. So let me uh, it is very important to check the consistency of your paints before putting them in your cup because the sauce may thicken upon standing and this sauce most certainly did. So you want to make sure that they are all the same consistency before you put them in your cup. And even though I just checked this right before I did my base coat, it does, it can do that. So always uh, good to double check that. So first, uh, this is going in, I'm pouring from up high. I want it to sink and blend when you hear that plop, that's a good thing. And I'm doing this one first. Uh, because I wanted it to blend with that gray and maybe give some variation in the cells that will be created. And again, this one thickened up. I just checked these. 
not five minutes ago. So always, always double check. Antique bronze. So the bronze and the gold are warm neutrals, warmer neutrals. And the gray is a cooler neutral. You can absolutely use grays and golds together. Okay, now for this flamingo <laughs> looking color. We'll see, I may hate this color. I may wind up thinking it's the bee's knees. And the soft gold. Okay, again, from up high, allowing it to churn and sink and blend. And honestly, creating bubbles that will help these cell makers come to the top. And you can see what's happening in there already. All those paints are trying to come to the top. So I'm going to take that leftover background color slash base coat color and try to cover up those cell makers so that everybody has a chance to join the party, get in on the cell making action, if you just have all cell makers next to each other, they won't make cells. It needs to have that paint to react with. This is the hydrophobic effect. The deco art paints are more matte in finish. And the, uh, the Liquitex paints are a bit more glossy. Just let me pop any bubbles so that they don't pop up through my core later on. Okay. As you can see, they're trying to pop up again already. So I'm gonna get pouring. And uh, I'm gonna be doing even less of a spiral than usual. I want to get as much of the genuine straight pour as I can. Very, very slow turn. I'm pouring from up high. I'm letting those paints churn as they hit the canvas. And as I get closer to the end of my cup, I will get closer to the canvas so I have more control. And the center is where you want the most control. That is going to be the focal point generally. It is going to get stretched the most. And you want to give that as much love as possible. Be as careful as possible. Generally, when I get to the end of my cup, whatever the last color that I put in the cup, that color starts to come out. And I do see it. It is blending with the flamingo. It's there, just blending. And it's coming out slowly, so I'm barely moving this canvas. But I do want enough of that spiral action to give that cool vortex effect. Okay. 
Time to hold the breath and catch the drip. Here we go. Whew, okay. All right, lots of bubbles, lots of bubbles created in this technique, but they can be your friends. So if you don't know about the hydrophobic effect, you can check out the previous video that I did explaining the difference between the Rayleigh-Taylor instability and the hydrophobic effect. But basically what it is, is the matte paints push away the glossier paints which can give you the groovy cell action, if you're lucky. Popping more bubbles, so many bubbles. So as these tiny bubbles that are underneath the top layer are popped and they come up, they bring paint with it. And if it's a cell making paint and it comes up against your background paint, you'll get cells. That's how the boulder cells are created. And generally, if I'm getting boulder cells, I'm gonna see them by now. So they're here. This area, when it's stretched, uh, I think it's probably gonna look pretty cool. And, you know, because of the nature of how these uh, paint pours work, this is going to become that and become the focal point, we hope. Should everything go to plan. Just making sure that my center is in the center. Okay. Well, I think as far as boulders go, we're looking at a WYSIWYG situation, which sees what you get just because of how this all came out, uh, I'm, I'm not getting the vibe that more boulder cells are going to be popping up. After 400 of these, you kind of, <laughs> you kind of get to know what's happening uh, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly after you uh, pour it, you can kind of predict somewhat what's going to happen. All right. Gentle spin. There is no reason to do this fast. It doesn't have to fling onto your wall. Okay, now see, this is, this is going faster than the other side. So I'm actually going to slide it slightly towards the side that needs to move more. So I'll do it this way for a little bit. So this is actually off center. But it should help to even that out a little bit. Do the same thing, sliding it in this direction to get that side to move a little more.
Okay, now there's just this little side here that looks like I need to push it just a hair that way. So whatever side is, is kind of sticking out the most is going to be the direction it gets pulled in the most. That's where it's going to feel the most centrifugal force. So we can use that to our advantage. And try to get it to happen more evenly. I have my cup. I'm just going to give a few little streaks here, which I think if you do wind up having to leave some negative space, having these little lines can be really helpful. It just makes it look more like it's part of the uh, composition and not something that was added later. Because once you spin it out, it will have more of a uh, of an organic appearance. It doesn't have to be perfect. The lines, you just kind of want them to go along with the same direction of the pour so that it looks a bit more organic. And a lot of this will still get spun off. I'm still doing more spinning. But just in case I can't spin the corners completely off, this will help. Okay, more spinning, more spinning. Let's see, what direction do we need to go? This direction, okay. So, I'm going to race, center this, do as I say. So this side is sticking off just a bit more. And that's off frame and I apologize. I can only get this, uh, <laughs> this camera up so high um, and still be able to reach it to turn it on. So I have some limitations there. Okay, let's give this a bit of a spin. So the corners are always going to be tricky when you're on a round or on a uh, square canvas and and you're spinning, you know, trying to get to that uh, get that perfect roundness to cover up those corners. It's a challenge. It's not impossible though. And if you can't cover the corners, you can at least get them to blend in such a way where it looks all right. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there.
I feel like this corner is just drying out a little bit here and that's why I'm having a hard time. I need a bit more juice. But again, I'm still staying within that same shape that I was working with. And this side needs a little bit more love. Okay, more spinning, more spinning. Pushing it further away from me. That one corner is being naughty. Give that as much of a chance as possible. Getting there. See, when these corners start to dry up on you, and the corners do first for some reason, when those corners dry up, the paint just will not go over them. So you may need to go in and give it some love. And then give it a spin and hopefully that will get you all sorted. So I'm going to touch up these sides while I'm looking at them just to make sure everything is coming off as smoothly and as evenly as possible. You can see when you do this and you're checking you can see exactly where your paint has gotten a bit set because it is where the paint won't slide off of it. Okay, I think one more spin for the win. Okay, that's it. That's it. You can see my corners look like that's just how they came out of the cup and spun out that way. That's what we want. Has a very geode look on the outside here. The inside looks very opalescent, like a this kind of looks like an opal, like a raw opal. That flamingo pink is only bright in the center, which I don't mind. I don't mind having that little pop in there and the rest of it kind of mutes itself against those other colors. But this just has a very fiery effect, the way it's blending in with that gold there. Okay, so I am going to let this sit for a bit. 
I'm going to scrape my edges to make sure that I'm getting all of the drips. And I will bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. This is what we're working with. We got some pop up cells here that are very pretty. It's like a mixture of that gold and the flamingo. But truth be told, I would have rather there have either been more of those or none of those. <laughs> they they kind of look a little out of place there. Uh, but that is just the nature of this beast, right? But how cool is this center? It's like the uh, flamingo and the swan, those couple of white boulder cells there. But look at how that pink blends, like in this section. Look how that is not an obnoxious color. It just blends in, except for the center, where that is a purer color. It's what ends up at the bottom of the cup. Whatever goes in my pouring cup last, for some reason, winds up in the center. And so I always keep that in mind when I'm loading my cup because whatever comes out of that cup last is going to be the very, very center of my painting. And I think that looks pretty darn cool. Just everything else is, is pretty muted, except for that center and those couple of cells, those naughty cells. But you can see how the, uh, the corners just look like that's just how you poured it. You can add to your corners and then blend it out and you can't even tell. But there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, my website GinaDeLuca.net where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. You'll also find the affiliate links. I am a deco art affiliate so if you want to grab some of these paints head on over to deco art use the affiliate link use the coupon code and i will receive a commission at no additional cost to you and the same goes for all of my other fantastic affiliates blick arteza amazon anything that you purchase off of those websites if you use those links i get credit for also in the description box, you will find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. Okay. Well, that is it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.